Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so this is my uh my new video about the uh, Cantor Burst and Shoulders Theorem, and uh, yeah, so uh, this is a very interesting theorem in the in a set theory and also in you know, advanced calculus. So uh, I want to present the proof. Okay, so the interesting uh, the problem is that basically suppose so theorem just say that uh, suppose you got a map to b and then suppose you got g from b map to a and uh, where this is injective so basically it's called one to one. Okay, if you both have you have this case then there is this h such that uh, uh, a to b which is one one and on two. Okay, so mathematically it just says that, that uh, suppose you have injective map from a to b and uh, b to a then the A and B must have the same cardinality. So cardinality. Well, so this theorem is very uh, not so trivial, right? But uh, so the extreme mode, the simplest the case, which is trivial is that uh, you can assume, if you assume that A, B are both finite, then easy to prove this because if A, uh, there is an injective map from A to B, then you can prove this, right? And then if there is a injective map from B to A, then uh, you, get, uh, you get B that's we could A. You can then have the same cardiality. Okay, but the difficult part is that uh, if you forget, if you don't have this finite finite idea, uh, if you, if your AB are fine are, are infinite, uh, which can be rational, uh, countable, count, uncountable, or uh, larger. Okay, so let me just present a proof. Uh, there are various proof online, but uh, I like this very uh, concise proof. Okay, so this proof is very abstract but uh, interesting. So let's define uh define B belongs to B. Uh, it's lonely if uh, there's no A belongs to A such that uh, F of A equals to B. Okay, so B, uh, if you take any set into B, it's lonely means that uh, which is not the uh, not pre-image of some element. Okay, and uh, let's say B belongs to B is a descendant. Let's call it a descendant. Uh, descendant of B0 belongs to B. So if B belongs to B is a descendant of the B0 of B, such that uh, there exists the positive, uh, sorry, there's a uh, non-zero non -zero integer such that uh, B is a F circle G with a uh, power N. So basically you just iterate this N times and the uh, B0. Okay, so this is a definition. This just means, so when I see B, when I say B belongs to B is a descendant of B0 means that, uh, uh, mean, uh, means that this uh, this is a definition. Okay. Okay, so now okay, I can construct H. Okay, so H construction is very interesting. So we define H of A to be uh, if F of A, uh, so we can ask, ask F of A, right? So F is, let's say F is A from A from B injective and G is B from A injective. So your a, F of A is a num is a point B, right? So you can ask where F of A is a descendant. Okay, so where F of A is a descendant, let's say it's a descendant of a lonely point. So this is a descendant of lonely point. If F of A is a descendant of lonely points, so remember a uh, point is lonely if there is a no uh, A such that F of A equals B. If F of A is a descendant of a lonely points, then I can define G of inverse A. So let me just write, write this down because all the proof come from this. Uh, careful definition, descendants of lonely points. If ever is not, it's a descendant, otherwise, zero. Uh, sorry, not zero, it's a F of A. Okay, so now I claim that, uh, I claim it is what we want. It is what we want. Okay, so now uh, H is from A to B, okay? Okay, so you can ask why. So first, uh, we need to check that H is well-defined. Uh, this is simple. <clears throat> uh, this is simple, right? <clears throat> so if, if A is, uh, if a is uh, not the descendant of lonely points, then the just define F of A. So the idea is that uh, you, you, you only need to check the when let's say F of A is a descendant of lonely points. That means that what? That means that you can write F of A in terms of F times G up to some power N where, uh, for some B. Okay, where B is, uh, B 
be the lonely point. Okay, so you can write f of a to be f x on something, which is uh, where x on something, which is let's say b bar, right? Okay, so uh, here is the idea that n must be greater equal to one. Okay, the reason is that uh, f of a cannot be a lonely point. The reason this is by definition, right? If f of a is by lonely points, then this is violate my definition because the lonely point means there's no a such as f of a equals b. So in this case, n must be greater equal to one. Okay, so I can take I can take out one f circle g x on the b, b bar. Okay, so this is f of a equals f of g of b bar. Okay, so this means that uh, f is injective, right? So it means that a must be equals to g bar, where you can define. So g inverse a is well defined. Because I can define g inverse a to be a b bar. Okay, so now, uh, well, so now let's, let's uh, do a proof of, so I need to check that where edge is a surreactive. And uh, okay, so proof f is surjective. Okay, so this part is a uh, very interesting proof. That, uh, uh, okay, so let's say consider b belongs to b. Uh, there are two cases, right? The first case is that uh, b is a descendant of lonely points. So b is a de uh, descendant of lonely points or, or not, right? Okay, so if b is, okay, so let's see. So if or uh, if B is not a descendant of lonely points, that means B is not a lonely point, right? B is also not a lonely point because by by definition, al allow lonely points to use n equals to zero, right? So B is not a lonely point. At least then this is trivial, right? Because if B is not not lonely points, that means that there is a such that uh, f of a equals to B. Okay. And uh, in this case, that uh, f of a. Uh, in, 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 in this case, f of a is a b is not a is uh is not a it's not a descendant of lonely points, right? So this is just h of a. Okay. Uh I should say uh if b is not a descendant of lonely points, then the in particular b is not lonely points, right? So there exists a such f of a equals b. And then once I got this, I noticed that b is not a descendant of lonely points, means f of a is not a descendant of lonely points. So by definition, if f of a is not descendant of lone points, then of a will be f of a. Okay. Uh, so now if b is a descendant of lonely points, then uh, I can just take b equals to f times g uh, to power n, which uh, let's say, uh, let's say, which is you got something like, uh, like uh, uh, let's see, right? So, okay, so now uh, suppose b is a descendant of lonely points. And uh, so what, what this means that, uh, mm, okay, so this means that, uh, uh, let's see. So if, if B is a descendant, let me see. If B is a descendant, uh, if B is a descendant of lonely points, and I want to say that uh, you can come out with A such that uh, H of A equals to B. So if B is a descendant of lonely points, uh, let's so that means b can be written as fg circle to n, uh, let's say b bar. Okay, mm. okay, so now let's take uh, let's take fg circle b. You got fg circle, I think, uh, plus one by right? b bar. Okay, and uh. So this this f circle g b bar b is a so this guy is a is a descendant of lonely points by definition. So that means if you take h of g of b, if you take h of g of b, right? Because this f circle f g of b is a descendant of lonely points. So if you take h b g of b, you got g inverse g b, which is just b. Okay, so this G of B will be, or uh, will be your your uh, your pre image. So H is surjective. Okay, so now H is injective. Okay, so there is a, in order to prove this, let me just quickly prove uh, the the following lemma. So this lemma says that if F of A is a descendant of lonely points, if and only if H of A is a descendant of lonely points. Okay, so this proof is a uh. uh 
is a very simple, right? So suppose f of a, let's say, suppose f a is not a descendant, is not a descendant of lonely points. That means that uh, h of a by definition will be f of a. So trivial, f of a equals f of a, right? In this case, so it's not a descendant of lonely points. Okay. Now suppose if f is a, de a descendant of lonely points, means that uh, f of a can be written as f g circle to power some power n. Uh, in this case, b, where n must be greater than equal to 1. Okay. Now I want to claim that uh, h of a is a descendant of knowing points. So in this case, I want to calculate the g inverse, uh, g inverse a. Okay. Uh, so how should I calculate this? Right. So I can, uh, I can, I, okay. So I want to calculate. So the idea is that I want to calculate g inverse b. A G inverse A. So uh, I think one simple idea is that I just calculate. I just take the F inverse G inverse A on A. This will give me F circle G uh, minus one B. Okay, so this is a, uh, so this is F, right? So this is A equals to F circle G uh, minus one B, where N greater or equal to one. Okay, I got this. Oh, sorry, I got G, sorry, this is G inverse A. Okay, so I got G inverse A equals to F circle G uh, minus one B. Okay, so this, uh, this G inverse A uh, from N greater or equal to one, right? So this G inverse A, so this guy is still greater or equal to zero. So this G inverse A is a descendant of lonely point. Uh, where is H of A? Okay, so uh, we finish the proof. Okay, so now uh, I can prove H is injective. So simple, right? So suppose A1, uh, suppose HA1 equals HA2. There are only two cases, right? The first, because by the lemma, so there are two, two cases. The lemma is that uh, if H of A1 is not the descendant of lonely points, then the definitely H of A2 is not the descendant of lonely points. By the first lemma, right? Because uh, by the first lemma, because h of a1 equals h of a2, then I, I either one of these must be said descendant. I mean, I mean, uh, I, okay, so the, uh, there's no no lemma need to use here, right? Right, but h of a1 is not descendant by this is definition, right? Because if they are the same, then must one of these must I, I either one of them, I either two of them must be the not descendant of lonely points, or either two of them. Uh, both be a cinema. So there's no demo here, right? So, but uh, I, I know that H of A1 is that it's not descendant of lonely points. H of A2 is not descendant of lonely points. Uh, so, so if I got H of A1 is not descendant of lonely points, H of A2 is not descendant of lonely points, then what means, uh, what it means, what it means that uh, F of A1 is not a descendant of lonely points. And uh, F of A2 is not a descendant, also, F of A2 is not descendant of lonely points. Okay, so if H, if f of a one is not a descendant of lonely points, then the h of a one will be f of a one, where uh, h of a two will be f of a two, which tell you that uh, also f is injective. So this is a lemma. Okay, so uh, where f is injective, that uh, you you this is what my assumption. So a one equals a two. Okay, and uh, conversely, uh, sorry, the the other direction is that uh, suppose h of a one is a descendant of lonely points. And the uh, h of a two is uh, also they are the same, right? So they are descendant of lonely points. And by lemma, you know that f of a one is a descendant of lonely points. Also, f of a two is a descendant of lonely points. Then in this case, that uh, you get g of a inverse a one, same as g of inverse a two. This is h of a one. This is h of a two. And the g is injective, right? So g is injective. Then you know that a one equals a two. Okay, so this proof is uh, so interesting that uh, so that so once uh, we get this, we prove that H is injective and H is subjective and H is well defined. So we should prove the original uh, Cantor uh, kind of show the first density. We hope hopefully this proof is interesting. I mean, uh, there are proof that you can draw lots of diagram and uh, try to shrink the, the set, but, but I think this proof is much interesting that uh, very abstract, very beautiful. See you guys next video.